Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here, and finally back to bring you guys another deck profile for you all. So of course, as you see here, what I have to showcase for you guys is my Thavis deck for Aqua Force. And, you know, I've definitely been tinkering around with this deck around the release of the Aqua Force Extra Booster, and I did have to, I did take a little bit of a break from it, just, you know, Ripples was clearly running rampant for Aqua Force, and really being the face of Aqua Force being so dominant in its in the recent competitive scene and I kind of just was moving on to other decks to play test but I decided to give Thavis another try again of course as you guys may know in the recent February English restriction for us um, Ripples got uh, got a little bit of that restriction with Odysseus main, their main key card uh, one of their main key cards in Ripples being restricted to two so they no longer can run four Odysseus in the deck now there's definitely a lot of debate as to you know how strong Ripples are or will continue to be going forward with this restriction and honestly it will slow down ripples um, a bit because you know there is still a difference between having two Odysseus versus four because Odysseus is definitely definitely a, uh, a great playmaking card for ripples and it brought so much to the table for ripples especially in the early game which is where ripples really truly shine but I think ripple still has a few things going for it that you know, made it a competitor to, to begin with. So I feel like they can still, you know, continue uh, their surge in the competitive scene. But of course, you know, with it taking a, taking a little bit of a slight uh, mitigation, it does clear the waters a bit for some other versions of Aqua Force to kind of rise up a little bit uh, to represent. You know, mainly Blue Waves, I think, is definitely next in line to kind of be that, ne that next best thing for Aqua Force. Especially that Blue Waves is a, has a much easier time getting around control decks. I feel. But, uh, you know, Thavis, while I am really enjoying the unique perks that Thavis offers, um, I, I definitely can't say that it's gonna, it's definitely one of the more competitive um, Aqua Force builds. Uh, although I do kind of find it to be better than Maelstrom in a lot of cases through testing, but but hey, like I say, you know, as long as you're able to take advantage of uh, Lambros in your deck, I mean, you know, the deck can't be that bad, necessarily. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, deck is still a lot of fun to play with um i'm really enjoying it a lot and yeah without further ado let's actually get started so first off of the starters you have your kelpie rider mitros so he's of course a specific starter f meant for thavis but what he does is generation break one at wave three or more meaning at when you're at the third battle or higher for your turn you when you're vanguard grade three or higher with thavis in its name attacks you can put him into the soul, search your deck for one Thavis, one Thavis call to your rear guard, and then at the end of the turn, he goes back to your hand. So, a few things I really love about this card that really improve uh, the Thavis deck is, one, he can help you to enable that fourth attack, and especially in a lot of situations where you may not actually have the the quality in your hand to, effect, to get an ideal effective field to initiate that fourth attack, because... You know, being that this is not ripples, you still have to go back to the traditional Aqua Force ways of getting that, you know, uh, of enabling that fourth attack. So um, he definitely can get you that one extra card that you may not have, especially in the early stages of the game, to initiate that fourth battle. Um, thus, of course, triggering Thavis' stride break skill and other skills of uh, certain cards in the deck, but mainly that Thavis stri stride break skill. Um, and most importantly, he goes back. Him going back to your hand, of course, gives you an, a guaranteed fodder for next turn to stride. Because uh, I know my initial problems I had with Thavis before the starter ever came out was sometimes I may not have, you know, that one extra unit, ideal unit to call down to get the fourth attack, or I just don't have a way to stride next turn. So he kind of helps address those issues around the early stages of the game for you, or at least in, initially when you're setting up stride. So definitely a very important card for the deck, and definitely a must play. So for grade threes, of course, we have your fourth Thavis. Um, if Agent from Team No Guard is watching, yes, I know, I'm fully aware these are commons. I know I'm a scrub for playing commons, but this is all I had access to uh, in a short amount of time uh, at the time the extra booster release, and I've been meaning to go to get to the hol to get hollows, um, but I just never got around to it. But you know, we're gonna play with the commons for now, so whatever they do the same thing, and then another card I'm really liking from the extra booster that it offered for this deck is. Uh, four Skyros. Now, I really like the four Skyros just because, especially my local meta, you know, control is such a is such a huge deck. Um, 
And I think control, you know, always is going to be a thing in any competitive meta we had. Um, but what mainly what he does is, while he's in Vanguard Circle, Generation Break 1, all your units in the front row gain resist. So he kind of gives you that, obviously gives you that protection um, in your deck. And although there's still ways to kind of play around that, you know, because, you know, like Chaos Universe can still play around it. The Witches, if people play Shadow Witches, can get around it. And if you're not careful with what you put in your back row, the, um, like Big Crunch and Roof Flare can still get around it. So definitely keep that in mind. But it definitely gave a lot of opponents, especially Link Joker players initially, some problems um, when I, you know, choose to ride this guy. Uh, just because obviously they can't, they have troubles addressing my field. And if you're able to, and if you really try to go square up with Aqua Force, um, a lot of times that's really... Um, really be troublesome for your opponent because I mean being that you can freely use Lambros at will And then of course that's like an added bonus, you know when you um, when you place him um, On the field you can target what you excuse me when you ride him You can target like one unit on the field give it the Rex tech red text ability at third battle when it attacks search your top five for a great three so uh, Definitely like an added added bonus to him, but you mainly play him for that um, resistibility and next up for grade twos. Sorry guys, I thought I was a little bit more prepared than this. You have your, you know, essential enablers, standard enablers in the deck. Your four title assault, because title assault is really ridiculous. And I've definitely been talking with a few uh, guys, a few guys of mine online about like restricting or banning title assault, but I'm not gonna get more into it, but that was just like up for debate. But title assault, very strong essential card for Aqua Force, so definitely want to play that as a four of. And then the four Magnum Assaults. Although I did find myself at times cutting him, maybe like cutting one, putting something else in, um, you know, that can uh, that could be much better to take advantage of in the early stages of the game, just because he is a GB1 card, uh, which of course, you know, people like to play grade 2 game against me a lot, but I still like the 4 just because he's just a very strong card to draw into, um, very powerful, of course, in conjunction with Lambros. Um, being able to hit 21 by himself, but most importantly, you know, it's never really much of a hindrance at all for me to have four in my hand because you can just call one at a time, like especially in early stages of the game. Um, and then your opponents usually, I always find my opponents like using up like columned attacks or even their vanguard sometimes just to attack him, which you know he can absorb, um, you know, free, uh, free column hits. So nice, good damage sponge as well. So that's kind of like an extra perk of just having the four in the deck. And then for another enabler, uh, I'm running the two uh, Battle Siren Adelaide. Now there was some debate between me and some other uh, fellow Aqua Force players on you know whether we really like this card or not. I really like this card. Um, I think it shouldn't be played higher than two because one, it's GB, it is restricted to GB one, and it only works the turn you place it on Rearguard Circle. Of course, this is the Glimmer Breath clone for Thavis. Um, so on play, Count Bus One, Soul Blast One. It gains plus two to the end of turn, and then when it attacks, when it attacks Vanguard, you can restand. So, obviously, it works really well with um, Lambros because it's like another 11k that can re that can enable and then hit for 21 by itself. But I really love the interaction it has with the new Thavis Stride, which I'll get more details later about him. But mainly with the new Thavis Stride, you can give this like plus five, put it in the back row, and then like swing twice, uh, which is definitely really nice. Uh, so there's definitely a nice few things. Um, that you can really take advantage of that it has good interactions with or you know just attacking twice is still good because that's just two cards out of your opponent's hand but I definitely just like I said don't recommend to play more than two because it could definitely have some consistency issues and how useful it can be and you definitely don't want to draw too many you know it's really meant to be used at those opportune moments and my last grade two is a one of I'm still playing the one high tide sniper um, soul can be slight issue just because I am playing Adelaide's in the deck um, and you know honestly there were plenty of games where I didn't have the high tide sniper and it didn't really bother me that much. And, you know, definitely it's an added bonus, of course, to take advantage of with Lambros. But um, there's definitely debate, you know, I can cut uh, Magnum Assault and play another high tide if I wanted. Because, you know, there's definitely times where that extra push can really make a difference. But um, so far, you know, I've been making do with, the, since the lineup uh, that I decided to go on is pretty tight, I've been really making do with the one high tide sniper. But that's definitely an option that I may... Uh, go with um, in the near future down the road. Uh, now, next for grade ones, you have your four perfect guards. These probably should be unflipper P uh, G perfect guards, but I honestly never got around to getting them since I kind of took a little of a break from playing uh, from playing this deck. But 
Counterblasting hasn't really been much of an issue for me, so, you know, whatever. Since Metal Borgs, of course, is rising up again, it's uh, even more reason to play, to keep the regular Perfect Guards in here. Because, uh, you know, Laurel is still a pain to deal with. So, for Perfects, four Stride Enablers, not much more to say. Although, I was kind of slightly disappointed with the Extra Booster that they didn't have, like, a signed version to come with, you know, as a promo or maybe just something like that. I thought that would have been a nice opportunity to help Aqua Force players out there bling up their decks a little bit. Um, and then, you have your two, I call her Hestia, because if you've ever seen that anime, she kind of looks like her. Um, but yeah, Orthia. So, Orthia is just another, uh, most importantly, she has Resist, which I like, but she's just another way to be an enabler for you. So... And mainly, like, if you have spare grade 3s, you could, like, use a grade 3 in front of her. Because um, the grade 3, it allows the grade 3s to still hit for, like, that 6k plus, like, 10k base with Lambros to still hit for 16 on second attack. Um, oh, but I didn't even say what she does. Sorry, guys. So, Generation Break 1, only once per turn. When she boosts a, um, an Aqua Force unit, you can, uh, Excuse me, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, Restand the unit, give it minus 5. So you're essentially making a Tidal Assault. So I definitely like to use it with 11Ks on Lambros turns if I have to. Because uh, you could still hit ideal numbers. 11K is like right at the mark for that magic number. And most importantly, it's made you know for that interaction with High Tide Sniper. But again, it's another card that uses Soul. And I am playing Adelaide in the deck. So again, another reason why I kind of didn't want to play... An extra high tide, um, but that's like kind of like the two main cards I like to use. I like to interact her with. And um, another card I really love this card a lot. I actually may almost want to put this up at more than two. But uh, you have your Battle Siren Millennia. Millennia. Sorry guys, I'm always bad with names. Millennia. Let's go with Millennia. Um, but yeah, she's another Thavis card. Um, but GB one wave three or more. When she attacks the Vanguard, you can count bus one. She gains plus five until the end of the battle. And then you can draw a card. Or draw a card and then give plus five to the end of battle if order matters for you guys. But yes, it's really, really another fantastic card. Um, you know, that can interact really well with the new Thavis Stride. Or, most importantly, using it with Lambros. Um, so, there are actually turns where I was able to, like, uh, have both of them on the field. And I resolved both of them, which was really nice. And even at the time, I was testing, like, three of them. I somehow got all three out, and then I resolved it like three times. Can't remember exactly how I did it, but it, but um, it's really, really good. Um, so which is why I kind of maybe want to bump this up again, uh, maybe cut down on one of her and put a play a third one. But and what another thing too I like is that she has resist. So it's another card with resist um, in the deck that I like. And then of course you have your two battle siren uh, Stacia. Uh, Stacy is still a really good enabler for Aqua Force. Uh, in case you guys don't know, GB1, she when she attacks, she gains plus three, and if she's excuse me when she attacks from back row, she gains plus three, and she can attack from the back row. So, um, a lot of times since um, usually your vanguard space is open in the back, um, it's that's this kind of, that's kind of the spot where to put her, so she can freely just attack and poke as she um, at will. Um, but yeah, but it's just really good. Another way to get around, maybe control, uh, and such without committing too much. But, um, but yeah, I run like four resist grade ones. Obviously, pairing it up with with uh, Skyros, I mean, pretty much makes your field untouchable. Um, which I like to call it the condom play because it protects. But yes, anyways. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I know like a lot of people like to say, well, Diablo, you know, Diablo gives you problems. If you do that, you automatically lose Diablo. Well, yes, that's true. But if, if I play against Diablo, I'll be sure not to ride this. I'll be sure to ride my Thavis, um, which should be obvious. And I'd rather like have a way to better deal with Link Joker, which pose as a much bigger problem throughout the whole game in general, as opposed to maybe like one turn or barely two anymore. Because, I mean, the only shadows you virtually play are um, Revengers, and they don't necessarily take advantage of Diablo rarely ever or rarely more than once. So there's still ways to play around Diablo. Link Joker, it's either you have the resources or the outs to it or you don't. I mean, um, you know, that's really how it is with Link Joker, and you can't really sit with nothing on your field the whole game and expect to win. So um, that's my theory to that. Uh, now, move, before we get to my stride deck, let's get the triggers out of the way. Of course, you have your four designated Thavis crits. You know, when your Thavis attacks, Thavis Vanguard attacks, put this in soul, draw a card, gets plus five. Um, I mean, it's actually nice to take advantage of Thavis' GB2 skill. 
giving that Silent Tom ability, which I really take advantage of it, but it's nice to have that. But most importantly, you know, if you really need to call a card down just to enable something or have to boost, but you don't have good quality ones, you know, she's definitely a good card for that reason to put in because she can replace herself, uh, which is nice. So um, definitely got to play four of those. Uh, four Supersonic Sailors. Honestly, I, didn't, I never ever needed to use a skill, and there are actually times where that 5k can make a difference. Like, I was just going to maybe replace these with, like, regular, like, 5k crits, uh, just because that 5k can make a difference, you know, like, maybe early game, I want to, like, maybe if my opponent's, like, playing grade 2 game against me, they're sitting on their 9k vanguard, and I want to beat them down with the title assault, you know, that 5k plus 9 could definitely make a difference in certain situations. Um, but, you know, this, uh, this card hasn't been seen much use at all so i was actually contemplating on just replacing them for regular crits for that for one of those reasons that i mentioned um then you have your four draw triggers cards amazing you got to play that and then four heals sexy legs always 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 i don't like mermaids for the record guys hence why i don't play bermudas but there are other reasons why i don't play bermudas but i digress um next for my strides um essentially you have uh three options for your first stride of course, you have your good old title bore, um, which, of course, you know, on hit, on third battle, you get to draw a card, call something from your hand, but most point, the, the draw a card is uh, pretty good, a nice pressure to your opponent. Um, then a new recent card uh, that came out as a promo for the extra booster, uh, Aristotle. Really love this card a lot, especially in conjunction with uh, Thavis, uh, Thavis' stride break, but on third battle, you get to third battle more, uh, you get to counter blast one and retire a rear guard. So that's pretty nice. So it gives Aqua Force a way to, you know, get some retiring down. Um, you know, plenty of times I face Metal Borgs, you know, I'm able to, you know, block their first attack and then snipe their Laurel and then, you know, force them to have the other one in their hand, which they usually sometimes, which they usually always do by uh, all my luck, but it's just nice to force them to have that answer. Um, but mainly, I really love the interaction with Davis, like I mentioned. Um, because of course with Davis' stride break skill on fourth attack, you get to your opponent has to retire a rear guard and then you get to retire. So you get to retire two in one turn while also, you know, pushing in at your opponent. So there's definitely a nice um nice momentum changes I cause in a few games, like mid game, when I'm able to sex successfully pull this off. Um so um uh, definitely a really solid card to play. Um next, of course, the new GR for the extra booster, the Thavis stride. So this card is really good. I really love this card a lot. So this could actually work as a first stride, but let me explain what he does real quick. So once per turn, you can Persona Flip from the G Zone, and then you can target one of your rear guards. It gets plus five until end of turn, and also the ability to be able to attack from the back row, um, which is really nice. So just like I explained earlier with my Grade 2 Adelaide, that can double attack, or even with the Grade 1 Thavis card, lets you draw and gain plus five. Um, you know, it's just really nice um, to have that ability to be able to interact with certain cards like that. Uh, and most importantly, sometimes if I don't have like any enabler in my hand, like a Magnum Assault or a Title, this can get you that fourth. This can just, you know, kind of get you a fourth battle to initiate a fourth battle. Mainly also to initiate the GB3 skill, which is just Davis' stride break skill. But keep in mind though, the difference is you have to target, you have to actually. Uh, the rear guard that you target for the skill uh, gains that ability, so that uh, rear guard that you target has to be the fourth of battle. So definitely keep that in mind because I know some people were confused, got a little confused about that a few times um, when they were playing with this card. Um, but yeah, um, really good card. Still another good card that interacts almost the same as Aristotle does with Davis. Uh, but more importantly, that plus five and attack from back row is really good. And keep in mind too, the giving able giving a rear guard plus five and the ability to attack from back row can be done on first stride. There's plenty of times I'm able to push my opponent and kind of like, you know, if I have the main cards I like that interacts well with this card, I'll just go straight into this and just push my opponent in with this. So uh, definitely a very strong card uh, for this deck. And I'm really liking the artwork too. You know, it's really cool. A lot, a lot of a lot of details going on in that picture. And then, of course, you got your four Lambros. I mean, not much more to say here. Uh, being that I'm not playing Ripples, I have to... Since I'm not playing Ripples, you know, I have to rely on crazy expensive cards to help me win. Because it's kind of funny that this deck was, like, more expensive just with the strides alone to build than Ripples. And Ripples was, like, the better deck. But, yeah, whatever. I digress. Um, but, yeah, definitely got to play the four Lambros. Not much more to say there. I mean, I think we should already know what he does. But, yeah, like, one of the best strides in the game um, by far. 
Unless you're facing, like, uh, control decks. Well, control decks suck. I hate dealing with them, which is why I play control decks. Um, but yes, anyways. So there you have it, guys. That is the deck. Um, as always, leave a comment down below with any, uh, with any questions, comments, or whatever, criticisms, if you like. Everyone likes doing those online, right? Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.